I don't think people have a responsibility to comment on every single event like this that's happened. But then to the extent to which these things are public and they're shoved in everyone's face as something that must be celebrated, reasonable people can come along and say, yeah, I'm not going to celebrate that. Right. I'm not going to congratulate that. That's not the way this works. When David and Bathsheba had their child, God didn't congratulate them on that. He killed the child and uh, David rebuked or Nathan rebuked him and I don't think anyone should be celebrating this achievement of this child that happened in this way, in that way. Warning, the following message may be offensive to some audiences. These audiences may include, but are not limited to, professing Christians who never read their Bible, sissies, sodomites, men with man buns, those who approve of men with man buns, man bun enablers, white knights for men with man buns, homemakers who have finished Netflix but don't know how to meal plan, and people who refer to their pets as fur babies. Your discretion is advised. People are tired of hearing nothing but doom and despair on the radio. The message of Christianity is that salvation is found in Christ alone, and any who reject Christ therefore forfeit any hope of salvation, any hope of heaven. The issue is that humanity is in sin, and the wrath of Almighty God is hanging over our heads. They will hear his words, they will not act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment, when the fires of wrath come, they will be consumed and they will perish. God wrapped himself in flesh, condescended, and became a man, died on the cross for sin, was resurrected on the third day, has ascended to the right hand of the Father, where he sits now to make intercession for us. Jesus is saying there is a group of people who will hear his words, they will act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment come in that final day, their house will stand. Welcome to Bible Bash, where we aim to equip the saints for the works of ministry by answering the questions you're not allowed to ask. We're your hosts, Harrison Kerrig and Pastor Tim Mullet, and today we'll answer the age-old question, should you congratulate an unwed expecting mother? Now, Tim, as we kick this episode off, what Bible verse do you have for us? Yeah, so Romans 1, 29 through uh, 32 says, they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They're gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Uh, though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but then give approval to those who practice them. So there you go. Okay, so how, how does that Bible verse relate to the title question, should you congratulate an unwed expecting mother? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you note the condemna- condemnation that's in there in Romans one twenty nine. So, though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. So, like the idea is that, I mean, just think about the society we live in right now. Think about the things that we celebrate. So not only do we celebrate all the vile practices that we celebrate as a society. I mean, not only do we do the, you know, the insane um, death penalty worthy things that we're doing as a society. What's the fundamental demand that's behind all these things? Well, the fundamental demand is that not only do we do them, but we have to praise people when they do them. And that, I mean, you can think about all the alphabet people along those lines with all the things that they're doing there's there's an company demand that you must celebrate these things also you know and that's why they the 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 targets of their outrage are often like the bakers and the you know videographers and everything else it, because they 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 they're not only do they want to participate in these evil things but they they demand that you celebrate them so you know part of what we're talking about when you're trying to answer a question along these lines is like what is the nature of congratulations and how should we respond to someone who um, is an unwed single mother? And certainly, you know, part of this element of congratulations involves celebration of certain things that m- most people, I think, have an intuitive response to say that perhaps we should shouldn't celebrate in that way. Okay, yeah. So, so you're basically saying no, we should not. We should not congratulate the single mother who. It- uh, who or the unwed, you know, woman who's expecting, uh, expecting, right? Yeah, I mean, so because I'm able to generalize when you ask a question along those lines, this is a question that someone asked us to ask. But I mean, it, like ninety percent of um, 
ninety percent of unwed single mothers like are the result of fornication. Okay. Right. So, yeah. So we're not we're not talking about like the the woman who you know is married and then her husband dies unexpectedly and then she had you know she has their baby she was already pregnant that that's not the kind of situation yeah, we're that's talking a about. very talk- small yeah that's a very 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 like small percentage of everything right you know? so i mean there's there's a variety of things that can happen with like an unwed single mother so most of it's a result of fornication i mean you can have a, you can have adultery that produces it so like a woman gets pregnant from someone else um you, you know or a woman cheats on a like a married man, that would be adultery, you know? So like this could either be adultery, this could be fornication. I mean, there's like a new fad where women are basically starting out intentionally as single mothers, like via like going to a sperm bank or something along those lines, Mm -hmm. you know? So, but I mean, 90% of this is fornication. Okay. (laughs) And then, you know, the rest of it is mostly due to either sexual sin or, um, like, you know, with adultery or something along those lines or, um, or, you know, you're pregnant, you get a divorce or anything like that. Right. So like vast majority of it is that, or, and then, you know, a smaller percentage is going to be like women intentionally pursuing single motherhood via sperm bank kind of situations. Um, and, and then, you know, at the very tail end of it, you have like a widow, poor widow or something like that. Right. So in that way yeah i mean if, if you're talking about any of these scenarios other than the widow then you're talking about some form of either sexual sin or some form of sin of some sort right so mm-hmm. so basically yeah so what like the the issue is what me what most people are trying to do when they're when they're, they're asking a question along these lines i mean this is actually a demand that many people have that you have to celebrate the child at that point like celebrate the life of the child. And so what many right. people are trying to do is they're trying to, and this, a lot of this is related to the pro-life logic, basically. So what's happening is there's a demand that people have that you, all right, yeah, I'm not going to celebrate the fornication. So if they allow you e- to even generalize, but like, which is questionable at this point <laughs> because you're living in a society that's so hostile to, you know, basic uh, wisdom at that point. But um it, once you get past the generalization element of it, then like the idea is that you, I mean, you have a lot of like very, you know, big name evangelical people who would respond to this kind of thing and basically just say, Hey, yeah, like what is demanded of the Christian is that you congratulate them on the child. And then you try to distance like what you're, what you're doing at that point is like you're congratulate, you're trying to separate the child itself and like the you know the sexual sin kind of thing so let's just kind of ignore the sexual sin and just congratulate you on the life of the child so like then then like the logic of it kind of becomes that you know a child is a blessing and you need to celebrate the blessing and so your congratulations to the woman in this situation is basically sell it like is basically kind of redefining congratulations is what it's doing but it's doing so in a way that basically you're celebrating the blessing and then like you have to do it like so this is what's implied in the whole conversation and it and it comes out like the more you talk to people about this but you have to congratulate this woman because if you shame her for her sin which me which basically means like even admit that even she, point out that there was <laughs> sin yeah, at all yeah you can't <laughs> yeah. do that right so you can't you can't shame the woman like you can't you can't say that she did anything wrong because if you did then like she's going to respond to that in a murderous like um uh out you know, like with murderous outrage and like she's going to go kill a child you know and then it's going to be your fault you know because so you're going to be the one who sinned yeah for yeah. pointing out the for pointing out yeah the sin, so it's right? like if you if you bring any moral awareness to the situation you're you know she's going to be reduced to like basically just uh you know um a t- two-year-old child or something like that at that point with no moral accountability whatsoever and then she's going to reasonably just want to like kill the child and it's going to be your fault because you made her feel bad you know and she can't help help the way she feels and so if you're really pro-life what you're what you have to do then is you have to ignore the fornication don't talk about that because that'll be shaming and celebrate the child right 
And so, and, and so it's not just, it's like a demand. You must celebrate the life of this child or else you're responsible for the abortion that happens. And anyone who's mm-hmm. pro, pro-life, you know, they have to think this way or else they're hypocrites. So that's the way it works. Right. Yeah. So, so I guess, um, and, and think, and following that line of thinking, you know, is there, is there any significance to the idea that, uh, you know, the, the Bible tells us that children are blessings. It doesn't necessarily seem like there's a qualification to that in any way. So if we're saying, if we're saying, you know, no, you don't celebrate, uh, the, you know, the, the new life that has been formed, uh, because of the way that it was formed, does it, are we going back on that, um, you know, on that truth claim from God that children are blessings from the Lord? Are we being hypocritical there? Oh, I want to give a few analogies here. Okay. Okay. So the first, right. first analogy I want to give to try to, so p- part of what's happening is the distinction that's made is you're not celebrating fornication. You're only celebrating the life of the child. And then the argument is put exactly the way you put it. It's because it's a blessing, right? So, but then like the issue is money is a blessing too, right? Sure. So, all right, let's think this through. So step one. So analogy one, right? (laughs) OnlyFans girl makes a bunch (laughs) of money through her OnlyFans, OnlyFans subscriptions and all that, right? Sure. Yeah. Money's a blessing, isn't it? Yeah. So shouldn't you celebrate <laughs> the, like the wealth, like the, the wealth that she achieved for herself, like the nice house that you'll never be able to, like, shouldn't you rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep? I mean, like she's, she's got this blessing, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say yes. <laughs> I mean, shouldn't you congratulate her on the wealth that she achieved? You're not, you're not celebrating the way she got the wealth you're just you're cel- just celebrating the wealth right because money's a blessing kids are a blessing right right they both are yeah that's true so what do you think uh no you cannot you cannot <laughs> celebrate the i mean this is the same as like the you know the the guy who fraudulently you know uh obtains wealth like you, no that's not a celebratory worthy achievement right so like a woman commits adultery with a married man and gets pregnant she gets her blessing right sure (laughs) but i mean isn't it a form of theft in the same way a form of what isn't it a form of theft theft yeah how so well i mean she stole from that wife oh yeah absolutely you you see what i mean there yeah, there's adultery there. So that blessing was illicitly gotten. You, you say, you say, right? So in mm-hmm. general, you don't, like if if someone robs someone blind, right? And then, but then they, you know, somehow the law is on their side and everything else, but they, they legit rob them, rob them blind. Like, like the issue is you don't celebrate like that person receives blessings just because they receive blessings. Like that's not really so. So basically it's a, it's a Jacob and Esau kind of argument yeah sure is that what you mean yeah i mean so that's part of it i mean it's it's part of what part of what we're talking about is like you can't just just you can't isolate the blessing and then not like ignore how it was obtained right (laughs) right yeah (laughs) that isn't that isn't the way it works all right so but then um like just another analogy to think through i mean think about like david and bathsheba so david like david uh got bathsheba pregnant kills uriah did god mm-hmm. celebrate that birth of that no. child or did, the, no. the, 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 that conception of that child right so no now now i mean like this, this is kind of somewhat of a trick question but look think, think it through for a second so certainly god didn't celebrate that child because he killed it right right mm-hmm. certainly nathan didn't celebrate that life of that child right he mm-hmm. rebuked david Okay, and now I pointed this out, and then I had people respond to this by saying, "Well, yeah, but God doesn't celebrate, or God doesn't congratulate us on anything, right?" Mm-hmm. And it's like, "Oh, huh, that's interesting, right?" <laughs> so think about uh, what you think about what you said. So they basically saying, "Yeah, God doesn't congratulate us on anything, but we should congratulate." It's like, "But oh, well, wait a minute, 
I thought you were saying congratulations, which is basically just um, like when you congratulate someone, like the argument is that you're not approving of how they achieved the thing, right? Mm-hmm. All you're doing is you're rejoicing with them over the blessings that they've gotten, they've gotten, however they've gotten it, right? So, but then like the, the, the issue is if, when I brought this up, people would push back and say, well, God doesn't congratulate us from anything. It's like, well, no, of course he doesn't congratulate us on anything because that like, because what congratulate means is different than what you think it means. Right. Mm-hmm. So like meaning like if someone wins, wins a race, what do you do? <laughs> you extend congratulations, right? Mm-hmm. that's different from like normal rejoicing so if someone wins a race you congratulate them that means you pray, praise someone or say that you approve of or are pleased about a special or unusual achievement on that part so god's not going to praise us for our achievements right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so but then like with the baby like the issue is when you're praising someone for their achievement you can't divorce that from how they got it do you see what i'm saying Right. That, that's all. So yes, God isn't going to congratulate us on anything because he's God and we can't do anything without him. Right. So he doesn't congratulate us. <laughs> like that's the way it works. But then the issue is that like when you congratulate someone, you, you can't divorce like what they've received from how they got it. Right. So like the whole idea of congratulate someone is saying, Hey, you're saying good job on what you did. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's the very thing you can't do with someone who gets a child from fornication. You can't say, congratulations right you you, i mean you can say something along the lines of um after you rebuke them (laughs) and (laughs) i mean after you rebuke them you can say something along the lines of well like the lord is good to us in ways that we don't deserve right Uh and like what you meant for evil god God means for good god meant for good (laughs) You can say something like that, but th- whatever that is, that's not a congratulations. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yeah. So what's happening is people are just playing funny with the definition of this word. <laughs> like, the, and they're pretending it means something it doesn't. So it's like, yes, like, I don't think you have to, like, if you repent of what you did and how you got here, like, if you confess your sins, God's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, you don't have to view this child as a permanent curse you can be thankful for the child despite how you got the child you don't have to just view the child as an irredeemable curse and as an outsider i don't have to view the child like that either but let's not pretend that this is the ideal way to have children and let's not pretend like there's not going to be consequences that come from this right Um, yeah and if you're a christian god will work all that to good but you actually do have to repent of that and you've chosen a very hard road and no, we're not going to congratulate you on what you've done. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and we're not going to congratulate you on the child, you know, like, like on the achievement of the child or something like that, right? Like, no, we're not going to mm-hmm. do that. But we can just say yes. Like, um, like, I mean, I think you can. You anyone can imagine how you can be in that kind of situation, and there's not just like a perpetual cloud that has to hang over. Like you're going to be a perpetual disapproving of this per- person in perpetuity forever, but you do have to think about like how are you going to respond to that, and it's not just going to be an un you know filtered praise in that way for sure. Mm-hmm. Not not to kind of go off topic too much, but going back to the whole congratul congratulations thing, isn't there isn't there like a, a precedence for God congratulating congratulating us? you know, in the sense of like running the race well, um, you know, I, uh, like the Bible mentions God, you know, telling the faithful, the ones who endure well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, I, I don't know that you can necessarily read that verse in in the sense of like, you know, you did this all, you know, congratulations, you did this all on your own type of thing, but then we're sort of, we're sort of being given, um, praise that we're that we're not really deserving of. Um, if you un- if you understand all the work that God is doing for on our behalf, but then he he's giving it to us anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think does that, I, does that make sense? Uh, I think under one, yeah, under one meaning of the term, you can look at something along those lines. And you can say, hey, yeah, I mean, at the very least, it's a commendation of sorts, right? Mm-hmm. So, like under. 
but I mean, it's obviously not like a, uh, I mean, you can think about it. You did it all on your own. Yeah. You pulled it off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's no, there's no biblical sense in which God is ever going to like congratulate a Christian for some kind of autonomous, like meritorious achievement that they've done purely right. on their own or anything like that. Right. So there's like, there's no sense like, and that's the kind of thing that most people are recoiling at the thought of when, when you're bringing up the idea of God congratulating us, it's like, well, no, he doesn't congratulate us like that as if we've like, like uh, we've done something on our own apart from him that we didn't need him in any, in any way. No, sure. Yeah. Right. So, I mean like the kind of um, like commendation that we get from God is a commendation that's grounded in the work of Christ on our, our own behalf, right? So it's not like right. autonomous merit that he's praising us for or something along those lines. And so there's no, there's, there's none of that, right? <laughs> so, I mean, but there's right. cer- certainly, yeah, I mean, there's certainly like a, a con- commendation that, you know, is completely undeserved, is unmerited praise, but it's fundamentally grounded like in, like he's praising us on the basis of what Christ has done through us. Right. So it's not like a ton of right. like praise in that way. Sure. Yes. It's certainly not the same. It's certainly not the same going, going back to the topic itself. You mentioned earlier this idea of, you know, if you're going to be, uh, well, well, let, let me ask this first, what people are going to say if you don't congratulate the unwed woman about to have a baby, they're going to, they're going to say, that you're being unloving. What's your response to that? <laughs> I mean, so bas- basically love um, now is a demand for universal positive regard. It's basically a demand for affirmation. So that's what love means. And that's why like the idea of ever shaming someone is seen to be so monstrous. Like the idea that you would bring any kind of moral awareness to any situation whatsoever. So, I mean, those are the demands that people have at this moment is that basically you just have to give people unconditional positive regard. And that's the way that they view God as looking at them as basically being their, you know, um, inspirational quote, a guru or something along those lines who basically just exists to heap, you know, adoration and praise upon us in some kind of um, like un- unfiltered way. So like God is love. And that's what, mo- that's what most people understand love to be now is basically just unconditional approval um, without bringing up any like morality. Right. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so related to a topic along these lines. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just the nature of how people understand love at this point. So if you don't basically just approve of everything a person does and everything that they actually are, then you're a hateful bigot and you hate them. And we've seen how that works out. All the alphabet people kind of, you know, (laughs) conversations basically. Right. Right. So this shows up everywhere across the board. Um, So, but a lot of this is just a symptom of the fact that are, we basically chucked a sexual morality out the window at this point. So there's no mm-hmm. such thing as any kind of sexual morality at this point. And, and a lot of this is what this actually reduces to. So people don't actually think that fornication is a sin anymore. So, I mean, if it is a sin, it's, it's just, you know, it's kind of no, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, tell it's like, it's like lying or something, you know, it's, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> it's like a white, yeah. White lie, you know, or something. Yeah, probably Every, everybody me- everybody messes up. Right? No one's perfect. We're all broken. We're all beautiful and broken, and you know all that. God, and, God get God gets it. God he gets understands. Us. Yeah, he does. Uh, he, he yeah he gets us. Uh, so uh, following that line of thinking, you also mentioned earlier on in the episode that if you are the person who is quote unquote unloving, you know, unlovingly pointing out that this was sin that needs to be repented of, uh then if the woman were to decide, Hey, you know what? There, there's no way for me to escape this shame and guilt other than to go and have the unborn baby killed, murder them, abort them, whatever. Then people's, people's immediate reaction, sort of knee jerk reaction is going to be, well, it's your fault. If you had just not pointed it out, if you had just not shamed them, then they wouldn't have done this evil thing. They wouldn't have killed the baby. They probably wouldn't even call it evil. They would just say they would just say it was unfortunate or, you know, how they're not going to call it evil. Um, 
so so is that how we should be looking at it the person who's pointing out hey this is sin you need to repent of it and then they go and and have the baby killed is it then your fault as the person who pointed out it was sin hmm. so a lot of what's happened as a result of critical theory is that the world's divided up into oppress like the oppressors and the oppressed essentially so mm -hmm. then what, what you have is you have a situation where like women are basically viewed as like victim classes of people and the pro-life movement has basically taken this logic like that women are victims and they basically like that's the way that like they're operating on the basic on these basic assumptions of critical theory essentially if that makes sense so then like a woman in this encounter if she's single mother then she's by definition a victim essentially mm -hmm. and so then because she's a victim and the rules for the game are that you can't blame the victim. You can't shame the victim. You have to support the victim. You have to validate the victim. And then that's the way it works. And I mean, and certainly, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be overly simplistic here. Right. So it's not as if like the woman is just a villain on her own, like apart from any guy here. Like the problem is that like when a woman gets pregnant, like when a woman gets pregnant is night you know 90 percent of the time or more is because she fornicated with a guy and like the issue is she's the only one who has to bear the consequences of that for the most part in our society right yeah like meaning she's like like the guy can just kind of disappear man you know <laughs> and then no one like, it's not like as if he wears the marks of his transgression on his very body or something like that you know, so he can just distance himself from the thing and she, she's the one that all the focus gets put on. And certainly, I mean, that's, um, certainly there's something about like, that's not, you know, fair, right? You, you, mm -hmm. you see, like, but, but I mean, meaning like, um, I, I'm not saying God is not fair for making her the, be the one who bears the children. It's just God's designed the world in such a way that, like sex is designed to be performed in the covenant of marriage. And when two people sin against him in that kind of way, this could be a consequence. And it's a consequence that women uniquely bear much more than men in that way. And so then right. we're reacting to that. Like what you have is you have a lot of you know, society full of people who are trying to overcompensate for that and basically just treat her as like, um, like a sinless, um, uh, like newborn or something, right? Like you, you have to check your talk, doctor on total depravity, but that's the way people think of infants, you know, is, uh, is this like these sinless angels or something like that. And you have to treat her like that too. And so then, and then you villainize like the guy behind the scenes and, and then all you, then what she needs is she needs support and she needs to be loved and she needs to be validated. And then it, it so then what happens is like, like you have like this way overcompensation on that side and you're not really, and because she's viewed as like an oppressed class of people, then you have to support her. You have to validate her. You have to affirm her. You got to get her back and you got to um, protect her from all the guilt and shame and condemnation and everything else. And so, but then like the issue is like the Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend and profuse or the kisses of an enemy. I mean, all you're doing is you're destroying her soul like by doing that. So if you just come along and basically just praise her and just say, Hey, we got your back. And, like one, like you're destroying her soul, but then two, what you're doing is you're normalizing child murder. Because I mean, the assumption behind the behind the assumption there is just to say that, like, if you don't do all that, then somehow you're the next person who's re-victimizing her, right? Mm -hmm. So she was victimized by the guy, and now you're victimizing her again because you don't have her back, and so like you're re -vict and so then it's just like, well, now if she kills the child, then the assumption behind it all is, well, that's kind of understandable because like one guy was like, she was a victim of the guy and now she's a victim of you. Right. And so everyone's a victim to her. And no one's going to take care of her. And if everyone doesn't come along and take care of her and provide for her and clean up her mess or whatever, then basically you're basically just saying you want that child to die. And it's like, well, no, like, <laughs> look, she didn't have to get in this mess. You know, the guy didn't have, there's a guy behind the scenes who put her, who helped put her in this mess, you know? So you have, um, co-villains here. Right. But then like mm -hmm. the issue is like, I'm not killing anyone. Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm not killing anyone. And if I don't like, and if I don't like unconditionally praise this person, 
I'm not an instrument of this baby's death. Like, like the issue is if everyone would just obey the Lord, then no one would be in this situation. And they're experiencing the bitter fruits of, you know, like you reap what you sow at that point. So then what you have is you have a society that basically won't hear that at this point and basically just is going to do whatever it can to you know, basic, basically blame shift and try to make it, you know, reasonable to kill children at that point. But yeah, like the most loving thing you can do is just do what the Bible commands you to do and no one's going to like it. But so, know, so how do you go about, how do you go about doing that? How do you go about, um, you know, confronting that kind of sin and, and do you do it all the time? Do you do it every time that you, you know, any time that you even know of an, an acquaintance, not necessarily someone who's involved in your life or goes, you know, goes to your church is in your fa- uh, family or, or friend group, but just someone that you know, maybe, maybe you see online that, um, you know, they they announce their, she's she announces she's pregnant and uh you know you know she's not married i mean do you do you go online and and do you point that out like like how how do you handle um the various situations where and where is the line where it's like hey it's it's probably just not even fruitful at this point given my you know how much i you know how well i know them or how close I am to them or whatever. Is there ever a line where you say it's probably just not even worth me doing? Yeah. I mean, I, I think when we, with public sins, I mean, there's public rebuke in that way, but then I mean, it's impossible to give like a one size fits all approach to how to handle like a situation like this, because there's so many different moving parts that are involved in this. I mean, I, 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 I think you could think, um, like if you were to have like a famous celebrity or whatever else, like I, mean, I don't think you have to comment on every single thing that, you know, online people turn into a controversy or anything else. But I mean, if there becomes a demand that some famous person gets p- pregnant via fornication and then everyone treats it like as if it didn't happen or something like that, I think it's perfectly reasonable to point out the obvious here that we should never celebrate fornication so i mean it, it kind of depends on how you're related to a person in that way and what we're even talking about if that makes sense mm-hmm. um, so you know obviously like like the issue is like if it's like a loved one if it's a family member you may have some unique responsibility to say something to them and i think what most people are doing at this point is just pretending it didn't happen right so they go immediately in the well we got to figure out what to do mode right <laughs> And like, we don't want the baby to die. So like, we got to figure out what to do. And I think that most people aren't even having these conversations anymore. I think it just like for many people, it kind of goes without saying that you shouldn't have that conversation even. Right. So I would Mm -hmm. say that don't skip that step. I mean, step one, if it's the person in your life who, um, you know, like this is a family member, this is a close friend, love them enough to have a conversation with them about it. No, so I don't think you should have keep on having like you know conversation after conversation after conversation, but you should at least talk about it. You know, there's an elephant in the room. You shouldn't pretend like this elephant didn't happen. Now, at a certain point, like I mean, you're talking about a like a lady who's pregnant out of wedlock. So the issue is she's not going to be able to raise her child. Do you you, you mm-hmm. know, see what I mean? Yeah, like someone's going to cover for her. I mean, unless she's just like independently wealthy, or unless like she you know, fleeces the guy for everything. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she can get out of him or whatever else. I mean, I can imagine, I mean, I can imagine, I can imagine some scenarios along these lines where, you know, a guy cheats on her or something like that. And she divorces him righteously and everything else. I mean, I can imagine some kind of scenarios where she truly is the innocent party and, and then he's going to be paying his child support the rest of his life and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, we're not really even talking about those kind of situations, obviously, but I mean, I, like I, for the most part, like if you're, you do have to think about like, what kind of help are you going to give in this kind of scenario, knowing that like the kind of scenario you're talking about is not, um, like y- y- we shouldn't underestimate what we're talking about here. Right. Mm -hmm. Like meaning like if you're in some kind of scenario where your loved one has gotten pregnant 
with no plan, with no support, with no whatever, then the help that you're going to, like, and she's coming to you for help in that kind of situation, like, you shouldn't whitewash what's happening. What's happening is she's asking you to raise her kids for her. Do you, mm-hmm. do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you do have to ask yourself, am I able to raise her kids for her? <laughs> Does, right? <laughs> like, meaning, like, it's like, um, so, I mean, like, when girls in that kind of situation come home and explain to their parents what's happening, then, yeah, I mean, what often happens is the grandparents are the parents and she's working <laughs> to try yeah. to figure out how to provide for the kids. So the there's someone else who's going to have to cover for this. And so you have to ask yourself, like, and particularly if you're in that situation and you've never had a moral conversation with this individual, then you've utterly failed them, right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's certain strings attached to my help, you know, and part of the strings that are going to be attached are not just like, I'm not just going to babysit your kid all day long while you continue to sleep around and keep on collecting new children. Right. (laughs) So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Right. You know, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to raise your kid for you as you go and go to the bar every week and try to figure out how to get a husband and come home, whatever wasted like, like that's. You're not loving anyone doing that kind of thing, right? So, I mean, I mean, at a certain point, it's just like, um, it, you know, there might be some people in that kind of situation, and then they realize they're dealing with the heart of stone. They're just like, well, yeah, I just, yeah, I can't do anything about them. I'm just going to care about this child. But you have to at least be honest about what's happening at that mm-hmm. point. So, I mean, I, I just, it's just like, where are you at in this? Um, how are you related? What's your responsibility here? I don't think people have a responsibility to comment on every single event like this that's happened. But then to the extent to which these things are public and they're shoved in everyone's face as something that must be celebrated, reasonable people can come along and say, yeah, I'm not going to celebrate that, right? I'm not going to congratulate that. That's not the way this works. When David and Bathsheba had their child, God didn't congratulate them on that. He killed the child and uh, David rebuked or Nathan rebuked him, and I don't think anyone should be celebrating this achievement of this child that happened in this way, in that way, right? So, mm-hmm. but certainly, yeah, um, life is always a gift, you know, sure, you know, so, yeah. Okay, well, I, I think that's a good place for us to wrap up the conversation on. So, thank you, Tim, for answering all my questions related to that. And yeah, it it definitely does seem like, this is one of those things where people just essentially pretend there is no such sin as fornication or adultery as it's related to the woman. And, and they're, I think they, I think you're right. I think they probably are trying to sort of swing the pendulum really far um, the other way where it's like, Hey, instead of, instead of only putting the blame on the women, like uh, or, or putting the, the vast majority of blame on the woman by herself. Now we're, we're doing the opposite where it's like, she can do no wrong. Obviously that's not helpful. It's not helpful for her. It's not helpful for her children. Uh, and, and you know, ultimately it's, it's really, it's just not helpful for anyone, honestly. So, so I, I appreciate you, uh, walking us through a lot of that stuff. Um, we, we also want to say thank you to everyone who has, uh, who's listening out there, who supports us week in and week out. If you want to see more of our content, you can do that by following the links down in the description to our Facebook page, to our, uh, Twitter account. I think there's also links to, you know, a few, a few other, um, social media profiles like our Instagram And you can give us a follow there through the links in the description. If you want to support us financially, you can do that through our link to Patreon, which is also in the description. And if you uh, are looking for other ways to support us that aren't financial, the biggest way you can do that is by leaving a like and a comment on the video, subscribing to our YouTube page and our Rumble page, uh, and then subscribing to the podcast wherever you listen to it in podcast form and leaving us a five-star review. And those are certainly some other ways that you can help support us, help get us out there uh, to more people and help us grow as a podcast. And we certainly appreciate that. And until the next episode, we'll see you. This has been another episode of Bible Bashed. We hope you have been encouraged and blessed through our discussion. 
We thank you for all your support and ask you to continue to like and subscribe to Bible Bashed and share our podcast with your friends and on social media. Please reach out to us with your questions, pushback, and potential topics for us to discuss in future episodes at BibleBashedPodcast at gmail.com and consider supporting us through Patreon. Now, go boldly and obey the truth in the midst of a biblically illiterate world who will be perpetually offended by your every move. Thank you.